I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to start with uh, a song that uh, the Father placed on my heart, and um, this is to prepare, um, you know how you marinate meat? Yes. Yeah. A little marination. A little marination, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so mm. the, um, and just so you know, um, we've been interceding for um, a lot of people, a lot of people, and some of them, um, they live very, very far away, mm -hmm. they know that we're interceding, they know that we're praying, they know that um, uh, that uh, we have been relentless for their healing, God. and um, we just we just know that God is moving in their lives, and you, even though they're not here, they're being marinated, whether you like it or not, you're being marinated. Amen. Amen. So, um, just let this song um, reach your heart and start to... Um, start the marinade. Splinters and stuff. Fate holds nothing on the providence I know. Longer bound to things of wood and stone When all I had to offer was my worst You saw my heavy heart and loved me first Your beauty staring down my brokenness You chose to throw your heart into the mess Crashing, crashing down upon my bed You were there all this time Like a river running through my failure You carried me all this time Like the splinters buried in your shore Now my heart cries hallelujah If ever now in the wonder of your grace A thousand times a thousand years my soul will say Grace You saw the crushing way my flesh deserved Forgiveness in the dark and One by one the stones fell where they lay As one by one my accusers walked all away With nothing left to throw they made a cross And no
Pastor, um, I'm actu actually going to ask you to read the scriptures. Um, I'll narrate through it. Okay. Um, if you have Proverbs 3 8, or if we can read Proverbs 3 2 8. Do you have it? Okay. 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 <coughs> Bill gave a word last week. Mm. Which was very unusual. Yeah. <laughs> to say the least. Very Thank unusual. You. He looked at me after we prayed about the spirit of offenses. How we get offended. I'm even getting offended that I'm even saying offended. <laughs> <laughs> because, as we know, offense really wounds us and we can't let it go so he said Lisa this may sound strange but I see broken spaghetti and he made one break mm -hmm. and Cut up meatballs with a side of garlic bread topped with barbecue sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe Bill was hungry. <laughs> but since we have food all the time at um, church in the sanctuary, I knew he wasn't hungry, but I knew that he gave me a word. And I was forever... Um, running after God's heart to find out what did he mean by this word. Mm -hmm. So I pondered on what is the spaghetti? What is the, the meatball? What do they represent? And um, he finally gave me the word um, during the week and um, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Mm -hmm. It was, it was uh, amazing. So Father and I got, we spent um, time in his bedchamber as we are now and um, he really took me into um, who we are in our souls but I wanted to start with something really funny because you know Philip always starts with a joke mm -hmm. right Philip? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I wanted to put a little funny here just to relax everybody and just make everybody laugh um, <laughs> So bear with me, because I want to get the, uh, get oh, it. Oh, yeah, I remember this one. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. This is the night. Yeah. Oh. Oh. oh, my song, my song. Well, you get the, um, you, you get, off. Yeah. yeah, I'll turn the Spotify off. For the one and bring this in. He wants a two spaghetti special. Tell me the meats of all. Hey, dogs are down to talk. He's a talker to me. Okay, he's a talker to you. You the boss. Mamma mia. Do you see the spaghetti and the meatballs there? <laughs> yeah, here you are. Has everybody seen this movie? Uh, yeah, yeah, they it. should, if you have kids. Lady in the Tramp. Yes. One me there's only one meatball left, remember? Oh. Okay, you see that? 
Praise God. Praise God. Right. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So that was um, my little fun, my little fun, um, you know, my little funny. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So, Pastor, if you could um, read Proverbs 3 through 8 for us. And I don't know if you want to stand up over here so the mic okay. can pick uh, you up. 3 through. Proverbs 3. Chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 8. eight. Yeah. Well, no. Start from Proverbs. Yep. Right here. My son. Okay. All the way. To, to number 8. eight. Okay. Yep. 1 through 8. Proverbs, Proverbs 3, 1 through 8. Through eight. My son, do not forget my law. Let, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Proverbs Thank you, Jesus. 3, 1 through 8. All right, can you read number 8 again? It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Inner healing. The inner healing that God wants to do is he wants to go deep, deep, deep into the inner healing, to the wounds that you have hidden. And try to push out of your mind. Ignore them. You don't identify with them. But they're there. They're there. And he wants to heal you. Once and for all. He doesn't want this sickness to perpetuate and multiply. He wants it to stop. He wants it to stop. We know the power of God. We know his healing power. We know his blood for the atonement of sins. We know he went to the cross for us. We know that he bore stripes for us. Every single wound that we have held on to, he took and he came out with power. Power. The power to be healed. The power to bring life. This morning, we are going to know the blood and we are going to recognize the power and that God wants us healed. He wants us healed. Paul said in Philippians 3.10, I want to know Christ. Have you, each of you, have ever wanted to know something so bad that you were relentless? You can't.
kept digging. You kept following. You didn't give up. Paul said that I want to know Christ. Yes. To know the power of his resurrection. And to participate in his sufferings, becoming like him unto death. Verse 11 says, And so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. <coughs> How many people want to know Christ? How many people want to know him intimately? Intimately. Know his heart. Know his heart. <coughs> well, today you're going to know his heart. You're going to feel his heart. And your soul is going to prosper. Thank you. Yes. Yes. John... 3 John 1, 2. He wants your soul to prosper. He wants your soul to prosper. He wants you to be in good health. I pray that in every way you may prosper and enjoy good health as your soul also prospers. If our soul is wounded, if we have wounds inside, how are we prospering? Our disease, our dis-ease, our depression, our anxiety, I mean, the list goes on. Anger. Strife. I mean, it goes on. Selfishness. The spirit of offense. It goes on. Job 21, 23 through 25 says, One dies in his full strength being holy, at ease and satisfied. His sides are filled out with fat and marrow of his bones is moist. While another dies with a bitter soul, never even tasting anything good. That's how we're supposed to die. Holy, full of fat, moist, tender heart, loving, Amen. thankful. Amen. This bitterness, this wounds that's wrecked havoc on your soul that you can't see anymore. And every sidewalk that you get to, I've been here before, I've been here before, I've been here before. It's an endless circle, a circle leading to nowhere. A circle leading to nowhere. You have to break out. You have to break out of that cycle. You have to pull away. In the Strong's Concordance, um, in Greek, dunamis, the definitions of miraculous power, might, strength, force, ability, moral power of excellence of soul. I gave you some scriptures so you can 
um, later on review power through God's ability the power through God's ability the power through God's ability do you know God's able do you think he's able I think he's able he's he's able he says he's able God's power is able to each and every one of you here. And it's needed in every scene in life to really grow in his sanctification and prepare for heaven. We here call our relationship a tapestry. It's a woven tapestry. Pam knows it's a tapestry. All the people that have come into her life that have been woven in and out of her life, that have blessed her, and she's blessed others. You know, people that God has brought into your life, it's like an ocean tide, seasonal. But you, you, don't, you don't long for not knowing where they are because they're in the beloved. Because you've planted a seed, mm -hmm. someone's watered, and you have faith that everything is working. Everything is working. It's all working. We trust. We trust. We trust in the air that we breathe. We trust that the sun comes out today and it will come out tomorrow on the just and the unjust. on the good and the evil. How precious is that? How precious is the love of God? He doesn't decipher between who am I gonna bless? He knows we take the blessing now. We take it. We take it and we take it in love. Now, being in his bedchamber for two weeks now, it's been two weeks, I, I, can't, I can't sleep, I can't eat, I just, like, he just pulls me in. <laughs> I'm stuck here, I can't get up. <laughs> I'm like, I, I can't move. <laughs> My ear is to the floor. But it is, I have to tell you, it is a wonderful place, and I hope you enjoy it here. Leviticus 17:11 For the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls for it is the blood by reason of the life that makes atonement Amen. What is the life What is the life? It's his ever being. It's the alpha. It's the omega. It's the beginning. It's the end. It's your destiny. It's your journey. He's your all in all. There was a time where I used to uh, think about Papa as tapioca pudding. And I would see these little balls of tapioca coming and moving. I was like, wow, Father, is that how you are? Can I just like nestle into your tap tapioca pudding and become engulfed in your love? That was about 15 years ago. It was wonderful. But he's ever present. He's ever trying to draw you in. It's when we make time in the heart, willing to heal our soul, that we surrender to the, to the excellence of soul that he wants for us. And he wants it for all of us, not just Beryl, right? Yeah. All right? Yeah. He wants it for all of us. So with that said, I want to go into 
the heart of Jesus. And the Lord showed me that um, the heart was exposed in John. Not Matthew, not Mark, not Luke, but it was exposed in John. God knew John. He knew him intimately. I want to point out that we're nine individuals in scriptures um, that were raised from the dead in the Bible. Some of them were um, by the saints and also Jesus. So he took me to John chapter 11. And I said, wow, John chapter 11, that's where the spaghetti and meatballs are? <laughs> this is amazing. And he said, I want to show you something that is going to take you into a deeper relationship with me. And he gives us word pictures gave David word pictures. He's given us, you know, signs. We've all had our tender moments with Jesus where you know he's speaking to you and you can treasure it. You can't explain it to you. You can't explain it to anybody because they weren't there. They're not in the intimacy with you and the Father. And Philip knows that Jesus speaks to me through 18-wheeler trucks. Every message I get, I get on a truck, and I'm just, thank you, Jesus. It's, he knows that I'm in the detail. He knows that I, I'm, I, can look at a, I can look at a paper clip, and I could have a scripture out of a paper clip. He knows that because I'm looking three-dimensional. I'm going in, 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 in. This is soul searching time. This is a season of multiplication. Multiplication. The cells are dividing. They are dividing. They are dividing. They are dividing. And they are producing life. They are producing life. Don't ever give up don't ever doubt we don't know what's going on on the inside because we can't see we can't see everything moving we can't see the laminin in our body that's holding us together the laminin the figure of the cross The broken pasta, broken once. The spaghetti, that little figure of laminin. I encourage you, if you don't know what laminin is, look it up on the internet. You will bring yourself down to the floor because that hung for us. And it's holding us together. Jesus always did what the Father was doing. His eyes were on the Father. In John 5, you can read this alone um, to yourself. Um, but I know for me, and I'm just going to speak real quickly, I'm always about my Father's business. I try to be. I try to be. I mean, there's different phases where you have to hold a conversation with somebody, but you know that you can have a facet of thoughts in different directions with different people, and you have to contain, and you have to think. It's amazing how God has created us to be able to do that. 
and focus and be the individuals that we are to our family, to our friends, to our bosses, to people that we know. I mean, we're able to move through life effort, effortlessly, just like in our body, things are moving in our body, in our soul, and we have no idea what's going on. But God does. But he does. Amen. Several years ago, I heard a preaching on John 11. I can't remember if I paid attention in church. It went in, went out. I don't remember. Because that's the past. But I can tell you a week later, I was on an airplane on the way to California to a compliance conference and there were forest fires everywhere in Los Angeles. Immediately I got off the plane and I took offense to the amount of smoke that I had to inhale and I had to accept that I was not healed from 9-11. Just the offense of the smoke, the cloud that hung amongst the Malibu skies in California. I didn't want to be there. And I took issue with Father. Why am I here? To go to a compliance conference? I could have done it on the internet. But he had a reason, and I was obedient. That Monday, one of my girlfriends had called me and said, Lisa, you need a GPS. If you're going to be going to people's homes when you show your jewelry, you're going to get lost. And she was right. She was right. I was a new driver. I started driving at 30 years old. It's pretty late in time, but north, south, east, west, you know. I'll pull out a map, but I'll probably have to leave two hours before. And I distinctly remember saying to her, don't worry, God will provide. Amen. I said it. And I was sure in my spirit, God will provide. There are things that you say with your tongue. Yeah. You better know what you say. Yeah. You better know what you say. But I said, God will provide. I continued into the conference Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And in the evening, once the conference was finished, they had a gala. And I was sitting there at a table speaking to a woman. And I'm like, Father, you brought me all the way out here. What is it? I'm about your business. And I'm sitting here with people drinking what could it have been? I looked past her shoulder and I moved to the side and I saw a commotion off on a table and immediately I excused myself politely. I'll be right back, right back. I walked over to the table. There was a man slumped over with a woman, two men, and they were trying to either pick him up or revive him. I asked, what's going on? And she said, my husband's pacemaker stopped. We've called the EMS. They're on our way. He has no pulse. I looked across. There were round tables. I mean, it was like 24 tables, a lot of people. I said, the EMS will not be able to get to him here. We need to move him to the other side where he can sit on a couch. In, it was an aquarium um, at, in California. And they sat him down. They pulled him like a wet noodle, of course. They sat him down. They were holding him up. And 
she had her hand on his wrist and she's like there's no pulse he's there's he's he's gone he's gone where is the ems where is the ems she was panicking and of course i just fell to my knees i said what is his name his name is michael she cried and immediately i grabbed his hands and i said michael in the name of jesus christ come forth I was desperate for her. I was desperate for him. I was desperate for the love that they had between each other that was slipping apart. Was it his time to die? Was it his time to go? I only saw what my father was doing. I got involved. Because I was there. I got involved because I was an ambassador to Christ. I got involved because I know what the blood is. I got involved because I know what the resurrection is. I got involved because Jesus got involved. And I called out his soul. I took authority. And I called his soul back. I can tell you that the EMS came. They got him up. They pushed everybody out of the crowd because they came in with authority. When those, you don't get involved with the EMS or fire people. You step aside because they, they have a job to do. And they're passionate about their job. And they got him on that stretcher. But guess where I was? I was invisible. I was at his feet. I was holding his feet the whole time, praying in spirit. I was binding the devil. I was just, just tearing it up. Because I was passionate. I was passionate for him. I was passionate for his life to be called back. They got, they said, there's a pulse. There's a pulse. Just get him into the ambulance. There's a pulse. I slipped back into that crowd, went back up to my hotel room. I slept a long sleep in the morning. I was very late for the conference the next morning as it closed. And I snuck in through the doors thinking nobody would see me arriving 45 minutes late. And somebody tapped me on the shoulder and said, is your name Lisa Leslie? Mm. I didn't want to answer. I was humbled. I didn't, I didn't want to be glorified. I wanted him to be glorified. So I turned around and said, yeah, perhaps it is this morning. (laughs) Oh, we have something for you. Oh, no, 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 please, please. No, 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 can't accept it. Oh, no, 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 it's, 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 don't worry, I'll, 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 it's in a small box, it's not big. They came back to the table and they gave me the box and I opened it up right then and there because if somebody gives you a gift, you don't say, okay, thank you very much, I'll you know, open it up later. I opened it up right then and there. And it was a GPS. Wow. It was a GPS. I mean, it sang to my heart. I knew it was like the last trip at the end, the 12th hour, that God showed himself and was pleased with me in obedience. So I am hoping today that you will heed to his obedience. 
I am going to open up and show you what you're going into right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So, do you know what's going on in your body right now? Every cell. Every cell. Every cell. show them the laminin. I think they can see the laminin. I think they need to see the laminin. They know what the laminin is. We've shown it before. The okay. laminin. So your body's pretty busy inside, and your cells are moving. Amen. Amen. So Lazarus was dead four days. What do you think his cells are doing? Decomposing. Decomposing? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Real bad. And Jesus, he waited around two, two extra days when he heard. And the love that he had for Lazarus is really, it's untold. I searched. I searched for that relationship. I wanted to know, how well did he know Lazarus? Because it came to him in a message that said, the one you love is sick. Mm -hmm. The one you love is sick. Amen. How'd they know? Mm -hmm. What kind of relationship did they have between mm -hmm. them? I know that God loves us. Mm -hmm. He loves each and every one of us. The one you love is sick. Mm -hmm. He had compassion. Mm -hmm. When Jesus heard this, he said the sickness, this sickness, 
the infirmity, weakness of the soul, will not end in death. But he waited two days to go back and see Lazarus. He knew that there were 12 hours in a day to get there. There was a lot going on in Judea. They wanted uh, to stone him. When he finally told his disciples that he was dead, he said, for your sake, I'm glad that I was not there so that you may believe. In John 5, the scripture says that he will show him even greater works than these so that you will be amazed. They needed to be amazed. They needed to be undone. They really needed to know that they know that they know that they know that they know so that they can go out and multiply like ourselves. That they can multiply the faith. They can say, I was a witness. I know my Lord. I know his blood. I know his resurrection. Because I've seen it with my own eyes. And I was amazed. And I know God is able. I know he's able. So Jesus said, you will be amazed. In the waiting. There's something in the waiting. There's something in the waiting. Two days, really? Do you wait two days to go to the hospital? No, you go because you can't take it anymore. It, the pain is unbearable. Do you think Jesus had any pain two days waiting? He waited two days to make sure the cells were on the go. Amen. They were departing. They needed to depart. You're going to call something back. It needs to come back. Amen. So that means it's gone. Amen. So he waited two days. When he arrived... Boy, he did get a visit from the sisters. He was met with unbelief by people he loved and cared for. He loved Martha. He loved Mary. He loved all the people that were there. But he was met and greeted. Aren't we supposed to greet each other with a kiss? And what does Jesus do when he walks in the room? He says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. There's no angst. But Martha runs up, greets him. Oh my goodness. If you were to been here, this wouldn't have happened. She greeted him with an offense. A gripe, a grudge, a motive. Her heart was in a tomb. Her brother. Jesus wants us to know him. He wants us to know him. He wants us to know his power. 
We are not to be moved. We are not to be shocked. And that's one of my big sayings. OMG. I'm shocked. I should not be shocked. I should know my God and his power and his resurrection. We need to be still and know that he is God. We need to know that we know that we know that we know him, that you've been in his bedchamber. He doesn't call you a stranger in that room. He says, come to me, come to me, come to me. This is something that he's yearning for. He wants your trust. He wants your belief. He wants your soul to call him out. I love you, Papa. I feel secure in you. I trust you that you have my back. You have my front. You have my top, bottom round, like in a cell. The hundred trillion cells that are moving in our body, moving, no chaos. We gotta get this. We gotta get this. I'll give it away. I'll get some away. But we gotta get this. We have to get this. This is your healing. Thank you. This is your healing. This is. There's no going back. There is no going back. Martha conceded and said, oh, I know about the resurrection. Okay, 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 okay. You know, she, she was appeased at that moment. She was appeased. But he was like, do you not believe? Do you not believe? Really? When you know somebody and you, you've been telling them a hundred times, put it on the left shelf, put it on the left shelf, put it on the left shelf, and then they put it on the right shelf. And you're like, how long have I been telling you to put it on the left shelf? Really? Well, maybe your right is to the left and maybe the left is to the right. But he... He, he, he was the, the grace of, of gentlemen that day. He knew. He knew. He knew where Lazarus was. He knew. When the both sisters, both of them, this was a double tag team. Martha, if you were only here, and Mary, if you were only here. Double whammy double whammy. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along, they were with them mourning for a while. He was moved and troubled, the Bible says. And then his question was, where have you laid him? When they said, come and see, they replied to Jesus. Jesus wept. He wept. Now, a lot of commentary and a lot of uh, writings show that Jesus may have wept for their unbelief. But Papa told me something different this week. He wept because he saw the tomb that he would eventually be laid into where a stone would be removed. If you know your predestination, he 
knew his death. He knew his resurrection. He wept knowing that all Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria would be weeping like Mary, Martha, and the Jews for him. In a couple of weeks, maybe, Passover was upon them. He knew that he was going to resurrect Lazarus because he was making a point. He needed to multiply Amen. his word. Amen. He knew that. They didn't know that. They didn't know that. But he knew that once he resurrected Lazarus, that's when the plot was to kill him. That's when the Sanhedrin said, that's it. He's done. Go out, get him. He's done. Amen. And you know what? If you find Lazarus, you kill him too. Amen. Lazarus was going to be dead twice. Amen. John chapter 12. When you find him, you find Lazarus and kill him too. Jesus wept because Lazarus was part of his taking up in life. Amen. Amen. When we cry out to God, our tears are a language to the soul. It's part of our DNA. There's not one tear that's the same. And you know what's going on in our body? It's going on in our tears. Every tear. And that's profound. Jesus wept. He wept. His language to Papa. Roll away the stone, he says. Roll away the stone. He saw the whole scene was going to be duplicated weeks to come. He spoke, Lazarus, hundred trillion cells, mm -hmm. come back, God. come back, come back, come back, mm -hmm. come back. Heal. Heal the soul. Heal every wound. Heal Lazarus' sickness. His sickness was healed in that resurrection. Remember, he had a sickness. It's it just like, you know, oh, Lazarus, uh, um, all right, this is what you're going to do. Uh, when you get, just pretend that you're sick and, you know, just play dead. No, he was sick. He was sick. We don't know. He, he could have been depressed. He could have been suicidal. He could have been with infirmity. But his soul needed to be healed. So Jesus took this opportunity because he saw what his father was doing. And it was not his time. His time was in John 12. When you find Jesus... Go get Lazarus and kill him. They were not going to have a resurrected man walking around. They weren't. He said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. How do you think? How do you think? Papa heard him. Perhaps maybe the tears of his soul. The tears of his soul. Jeremiah 29, 11, everybody knows that. Let's go to verse 12. When you come out and cry out to me, 
I will hear you. Papa heard him. Papa heard him. Jesus wasn't disappointed. He wasn't disappointed. This was his love language to Papa. It's okay to cry. It's okay. It's all right. This is your love language to him. He loves you. He wants you healed. He wants your soul to be excellent of soul. He's not giving up on you. His bedchamber is open to him. He's there. You can walk in. You don't even need to ask. You just walk in. He's there. Father, I thank you. I thank you that you do strange things, Father. I thank you for the spaghetti and meatballs. I thank you, Father God, that the meatballs cut in quarters represents the cells that are multiplying, that the disciples were able to take the amazement and spread the word spread the word as it's spreading now and I thank you Lord that you showed me that John your heart would write this in his book not Matthew not Mark not Luke, that your heart is hidden in the Gospel of John. There's not one parable in the Gospel of John because the Gospel of John is his heart. <laughs> 